Maggie LaBranche Gonzalez, and I'm an attorney with Litherland Kennedy and Associates. We're an estate planning and elder care law firm located in Campbell, California. Today's topic is all about step up and basis or stepped up basis. It's a super fun and exciting tax concept. So I know you're really excited. So the easiest way for me to explain this concept is to do a little example. So I want you to imagine that many, many years ago, you purchased your home for $100,000 and you waited a while and it appreciated over time. And when you sold your property, it was worth a million dollars. So the difference between when you sold it, that million dollars and your purchase price of 100,000, which we can all agree is $900,000 in appreciation, is what you're going to have to pay capital gains taxes on. Now, same example, except this time, instead of selling your home when it appreciated to a million dollars, you died. And so in this case, if your kids are inheriting the property and then they sold it, they would receive an automatic step up in basis to the date of death value, which in this case is a million dollars. So what does that mean? So long as the kids are selling it for a million dollars or less, they have no capital gains taxes, zero, because the step up was to the new fair market value as of the date of your death, that million dollars. All of the appreciation, that $900,000 is completely eliminated with that automatic step up. Now, let's say, for example, the kids are going to hold on to the property for a little while and it appreciates even more. So instead of now being a million dollars, let's say it's one point five million. Then they decide to sell it. Their appreciation for capital gains tax purposes is going to be the appreciation between the date of your death and the date of sale, which in this case is that five hundred thousand dollars in appreciation from the date of death until the date of sale. Okay, with me there? Now, what if you're married? One of the many or few benefits of being married, depending on how you look at it, is you can get a double step up in basis, especially here in California, on your community property assets. One of the many or few benefits of being married, again, that community property. So at the first death, automatic step up, just like we saw in my example. But again, let's say in, in this case, you were married and it appreciated to that million and a half instead of the kids inheriting it, you've, you've got your spouse still there. They're going to get a second step up. So in this case, the kids are going to inherit it at that 1.5 million to that double step up at the death of the second spouse. So they're going to eliminate even more appreciation. So instead of 100,000 to 1.5, that 1.4 million in appreciation completely eliminated. The kids are inheriting it at 1.5 million. And as long as they're selling it for less than that, no capital gains taxes. And again, it goes back again. So in essence, the step up in basis is really helping your beneficiaries, your heirs. They're resetting the value of those inherited assets for tax purposes. They're eliminating or completely, they're completely eliminating or even reducing the amount of capital gains taxes that the kids or the beneficiaries are going to have to pay if they sell the assets, right? So what kinds of assets are getting this step up? Pretty much all of your capital assets, all of the assets that are going to appreciate or depreciate in value over time. So the biggest one I think that people are often going to think about is your real property, uh, stocks, bonds, your cars, your helicopters, anything that's appreciating or depreciating over time is going to get to take advantage of the step up in basis. And again, this is automatic. This just happens because you died. Great, great, right? The question now is, how do you set or prove the value of the asset that is receiving the step up in basis? So typically you want to get an appraisal and you want to get an appraisal by a professional appraiser. So you want to hire someone who's qualified, certified. So for example, for real property, you're going to want to get a qualified, certified appraisal. You can't just use a comp from a real estate agent. It actually needs to be a certified licensed appraiser. And uh, you want to you want to hold on to that right? Um, if you have financial assets at a brokerage account, your stocks and bonds and things like that, then you want to talk to your broker because they have a, the, the stocks and bonds and all of those things. They need to be specially valued over the day. You can't just say, oh, it's the closing value or it's the day at, you know, at eight o'clock in the morning. So I'm like, they actually average it over the entire day. There's a whole formula. So it's very specialized. So you want to work with your broker. If you don't have a broker, you want to talk to a CPA, an attorney. Hello. 
Um, so that way you can get the actual appraisal value of those very specialized things. You know, your cars, your helicopters, your things like that. Again, you want to get somebody who's qualified to appraise those assets. The appraisal will, the appraiser will do an appraisal of the assets, fair market value, whatever it is, um, as of the date of death. And you are going to maintain all of those documents, right? You keep and make sure the appraisal has the value, the date, you want the date of death value, and also the appraisal's qualifications, certified, licensed, you know, it's an actual appraisal, an appraiser who can and give you the appraisal. You keep those documents. Now, if you have an estate that is subject to federal estate taxes, you're gonna file an estate tax return and you'll document the value of the asset in that return. Otherwise, you're just holding on to the documentation so that in the future, if you sell the asset, then you're going to report the basis on your tax return and you're going to supply all of these documents that you've uh, and records that you've held on to to substantiate the new basis with the IRS. If you don't get an appraisal, it's possible to go back in time and get a uh, an appraisal, right? They can go back in time, get what they call it a historical appraisal. It's gonna cost you a pretty penny. So it's always easier to get the appraisal around the date of death rather than waiting 10 or 15 years and then having them to go back and do it. But it can be done. Um, if you don't get an appraisal, you don't pay to get the historical appraisal, then you're kind of stuck with whatever the IRS thinks the asset is worth. And most people probably don't like that number. And of course, because you're dealing with fun tax issues, it's always important to work closely with an attorney or a professional tax a professional tax person, whether it's a CPA or, or somebody who specializes in estate planning to help you navigate all of these very specific tax laws. All right. Thanks for watching this video. Like it and subscribe and watch some of our other videos. Thanks.